Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and today we finally, fucking finally, got a good look at Hellboy, the the, the reboot that really no one asked for. Uh, everyone wanted Hellboy three. Everyone wanted Ron Perlman, Guillermo del Toro, Selma Blair, Doug Jones, and that other guy to come back and uh, and finish out the story to give a trilogy. And Guillermo tried. He tried. He desperately tried to do that one last push to get it made, and unfortunately Lionsgate wanted to go another direction, which makes sense because they acquired the rights from New Line Cinema, and that's just kind of where we find ourselves. But what we have here is this new trailer, this first look at David Harbour as Hellboy and not Ron Perlman, and it looks good. Neil Marshall is directing, which already had my money right off the bat, uh, Dog Soldiers, Doomsday, The Descent, Centurion, Centurion's not as good as the others, but it's still a good, solid action movie. Not to mention, the I, it was the season two, episode nine the of Game of Thrones, where they where they blow up the bay with the dragon fire. Neil Marshall directed that episode. So again, Neil Marshall got my money, got, got my money. So let's take a look here at just some screenshots I pulled from the trailer. Uh, just take a look to, 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 you know, to go through and see what we're looking at here, because there's some good visuals here. And it gives you a solid idea that Neil Marshall is trying to tackle this uh, while respecting the source material and still making it darkly comedic and rated R. Now we have here, this, this, this is an opening shot of the trailer uh, showing us an underground cavern of some kind. Hellboy is carrying someone. I'm assuming that's going to be... Um, the 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 female well, I forget her name the the not Selma Blair's character not Liz Sherman but she's a new woman and there's uh, there's Dymel right there I'm gonna probably mispronounce a bunch of names because I'm not really big into Hellboy and I just did his <laughs> some precursory research on this uh, we've got him looking at uh, the sword uh, in the stone here I'm, I'm assuming uh, this is uh, significant to the comics the BRPD logo has uh, the fist holding the sword is that Excalibur? Is that what it's supposed to be? I kind of get the feeling that it is. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong, but again, people are going to yell at me in the comments like, you don't know the comics. What are you doing looking at the trailer? Well, I'm trying to look at it from a person who doesn't know shit about the comics. Uh, only seen the two movies. Love the two other movies, by the way. Uh, just here we are. Uh, we got this uh, shot of a, of, a, of a chapel and a bunch of uh, demons and whatnot. Bats flying overhead, it looks like. Here's some stuff. And this is kind of typical. They shot this in Budapest or Hungary or, or, you know, Belgium. Somewhere in there, right? Like, this this is a shot that is, is very just kind of like, I've seen this before. You know, like, I Frankenstein, Underworld. It's a kind of uninspired shot setting up some kind of event at a church. I think even Hellboy 2 had an opening event at an auction that feels kind of similar to Hellboy 2. Uh, we got the shot of, of, of David Harbour getting out of the uh, the BRPD van and getting a shot fired at him from a SWAT officer, uh, which is pretty funny because this is where I think he's trying to, they're trying to establish the humor in the trailer because you got the guy right here going like, oh, sorry, my bad, <laughs> my bad, please, no, don't kill me. Don't, uh, it's, I'm only extra here for the one day, get the one line, not even SAG eligible, right? That's what it is. But if you look, I mean, like the, he looks like him, he looks like Ron Perlman, and I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I think that might actually be a detriment to the situation, considering that people wanted Ron Perlman to come back to finish out the trilogy. David Harbour looks the part, absolutely. Um, we got here, um, what is this, uh, you know, Ian McShane taking over uh, John Hurt's role uh, as Professor, is it Butterborn, Butterhorn? Brutenhorn, I'm again, I'm butchering names, but a younger version of him, not as old as John Hurt was in the original 2004 movie, but it's Ian McShane. So again, we know what we're in for with Ian McShane because he's amazing. Uh, here we've got the trio, the, the, the trio here we got. The, but what I love about this too is they're trying to keep Hellboy, what it feels like, out of the spotlight, but at the same time, they've got him out here in daylight uh, with, uh, with Daniel Day Kim. And again, I forget the woman's name there, but she's going to be like kind of like the, the girl that needs saving in the film. Uh, again, another shot of him, get a, a better shot of him, you know, and just like look at the detail. I would argue that compared to the to the effects of the 2004 movie, it, it's a lot more detailed. But he does look remarkably like Ron Perlman. I mean, the the pronounced chin and everything else. It does look like it could be him in there. I actually would be surprised. And this is the thing. I'd be very surprised. Uh, or I would laugh my ass off if someone were to get Ron Perlman to dub over the lines in the movie and then release the Ron Perlman audio track and then sync it up. 
That would be something. I wonder if he would do it. He probably wouldn't do it. I couldn't get him to say war. War never changes to me on the red carpet of the Spike Scream Awards in 2008 because of copyright war, you know, copyright laws, according to him. And, uh, you know, so I don't think he would do that, but we can we can dream. Uh, the shot here, again, I was able to, it's really hard to get a screenshot of the action, but he shoots that dude square in the head and blood goes everywhere. So it is definitely playing up the R rating. Um, and he kills a couple people in the trailer. Uh, this is a good shot here of him just gets getting kind of like that, that, uh, I think the humor aspect, like the, the, I think the sly humor that he's going to have the attitude, the sarcasm, uh, you can see here that he's kind of excited about, it. he's taking off the hood. Like I get to go to action now, uh, that might take place before this, but it looks like they're taking place around the same time, just based on the purples that I see, uh, and everything else. Uh, this shot here is just, again, a good solid look at him. We see the scars on his chest, uh, obviously the prosthetics on his face, uh, and really kind of looking down. But the question is, what, what's he looking at? What's he looking at? Oh, he's looking at this. But but the thing is, look how clean the gun is. So this is obviously the first time he gets to use it. This is obviously the first time Hellboy gets to use this gun. And especially going back over here where he shoots this guy. So this obviously is going to take place uh, either before it or either after it. Either he loses the gun and this is what he gets back at the end of it. But I think going into it, this is going to be the first time he uses it. Um, and, uh, he, he has a line after that that says, you know, some, some fathers get their son's Legos, which I thought was a really, really, really funny line for the trailer and one that really worked in what they were trying to go for. Uh, this is an interesting shot because I, I literally have no idea what's going on here, but we can see that Hellboy is here riding with these guys who have these weird ass backpacks and the person in the front is got an elk head mask on. Why? I mean, granted, a lot of this stuff is very fairy tale inspired. It's it's a lot of fairy tale themes that goes into this sort of uh, uh, property. So, you know, uh, the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. But again, this is crazy shit right here, right? Like, it's just it's just there's this quick shot of a dude of, of on horseback and a guy with a with a, an elk helmet on. I'm intrigued. Uh, we got this shot here, which I think is somewhat related to uh, to this. If I'm being fair. I think like this is a secret society, but look at the armor these guys have on there. Look at the armor, right? The armor there looks like they're knights and we saw the sword that could be Excalibur. Again, I'm just speculating here. So I'm wondering if this has to do with like more of a modern age type Arthurian legend sort of thing. And then that this particular group uh, is also involved in that. You can see there's some seals and some signs, some sigils back there, coat of arms in the top corner. You've got the elk head on the top right over there. Uh, again, going back to the, like the elk over here. So I don't know if it's significant, but we see that you've got all the all the other uh, rams and uh, an, ant an antelope and other creatures that have been shot. And then not not just skinned, you know, not just have their heads mounted on the wall. It's literally just the bones like they were bleached. So it's it's very much a theme, maybe maybe paganistic. I don't know. Uh, someone will probably very much correct me in the comments. Again, I'm going into this kind of blind. We got the shot here of a, of a city on fire and lava in a dragon. This uh, this to me doesn't seem like it's a shot in the movie. This to me seems like it's like a it's like a shot of what could come. Right. Like a vision that Hellboy will see or uh, there's a prophecy because there's like the Project Ragnarok, which is what brings Hellboy into the world. Right. That was from the first movie. And I think they're going to recreate it here. Um, and so I think that's going to be a big part of it. Then you've got uh, this creature, which just looks awesome. Uh, a vampire, a vampire bat. So clearly th this kind of, you know, again, we're talking fairy tales uh, and other and other creatures and whatnot. Dragons and vampire bats, dudes with elk masks. That's not even the craziest shit you see in the trailer. With this, again, this is kind of like one of the best shots I, I can get my hands on here. Um, well, this guy, uh, I got another one of this guy too coming up. But uh, but whatever the hell this thing is, I, when I first saw him, like he cuts that dude in half, tosses him, cuts him in half. And I, what appears to be completely skinned. So my thought was like Silent Hill 2006 Pyramid Head pulling off the woman's skin and throwing it at the door. Uh, Mila Jovovich is the, uh, the, the, the queen the witch in this one. She's the bad person. Uh, I saw some people criticize her performance on Twitter. I like Mila Jovovich quite a bit. I have for a long time. And I think people don't ever give her the credit she deserves as being one of the, uh, you know, like she has effectively has had one of the longest running uh, starring action roles in, in careers in Hollywood and never gets the credit for it, right? Always gets forgotten whenever there's a new topic of conversation about a new female action hero. No one ever gives her the time of day and she's a solid actress and she knows how to bring it. Never mind the fact that she is still 
we're talking days and confused to now smoking hot. That will never not be a thing. Uh, I got another shot here of uh, of Daniel Day Kim as uh, as Daimo, and he's got the scars on him. Daimio, da, Daimio, again, people are going to correct me on that one, uh, giving us an idea. Now, here's where we, I think we're going to see the, uh, this is this is Ragnarok. This is a quick shot uh, in the film, and we see definitely a connection to the original Hellboy film. We've got the Nazi over there in the corner. Um, I believe that's the, the, cur, the Colonel Klaus something or another that was the one leading the Project Ragnarok. Then we got the guy here in the gas mask and the goggles. If you've seen the first Hellboy, you recognize the character. That is the dude that's addicted to surgery. I had all these names brought up a second ago. They're all German. I forgot them. But this is, I think, going to be where we int are introduced to Hellboy as a baby uh, back in the 1940s. And so that's like the only shot with that one. Then we get this one here. This shot here of him falling out of a house on top of a walking chicken. That is only one thing, my friends. That's Baba Yaga, right? So like, what the hell is Baba Yaga doing in this? We're talking, we got vampire bats. We got some weird arm axe thing. We've got, you know, a dragon flying over a lava filled city. I mean, uh, you know, what is going on? Is, is, uh, you know, uh, Mila Jovovich, is she technically going to be like known as Baba Yaga and they're just going to be pulling from that particular, uh, legend. And again, a lot of this is Eastern European, but that is definitely, definitely Baba Yaga. Uh, this guy here, again, I couldn't get much more of a shot of this. Uh, this guy is just a big ass troll. Uh, you know, and he, he's, he's huge. He ends up knocking Hellboy away. Uh, again, looks really cool. These, these, the, everything happens so quick. It's hard to get a good screenshot. Uh, and then we got this, a uh, last up close shot of him. You can see the eyes, the prosthetics. It's gotta be a hell of a time jumping into that every single day. And I think Harbor all the way through was very much trying to bring it and it did a good job. This is the final shot of the trailer right here. Him emerging with the flaming sword. Uh, obviously, his horns coming back because he's not filing them down. We kind of saw this at the end of the first Hellboy movie as well, with the prophecy kind of being complete and his key being the way uh, that you know the gateway to the other side. Uh, and obviously, this is going to be something that comes out of it. We can see that the well is there, so they're clearly back at the same place. Uh, for right here, we can see that the, we see that the well is exactly the same, but this is probably not happening at the same time. Um, so it's just going to be kind of a jumping back and forth and stuff. Uh, and then we've got the BRPD logo right here with his hand holding the sword. Uh, so we, so they're clearly playing that up and then the Hellboy. Uh, again, my, 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 this, it looks good. It looks, it looks solid to me. It looks really interesting to me. It looks entertaining. The, the music, uh, you know, people were complaining about the music in the trailer, you know, kind of generic rock song, mixing with comedy, trying to be a little dark, a little edgy. Uh, but everyone's going to be looking back at this and comparing it to 2004 and 2008's Hellboy films, as they should, as they absolutely should. But that being said, well, it does appear that they are trying to rip off the Guillermo del Toro aesthetic a little bit. Neil Marshall is bringing his own flair to it. I think that's going to be there. Again, The Descent dealt with some creatures under, you know, underneath the ground. Uh, dog soldiers was werewolves. There's another shot that I couldn't get. It's, it's, uh, uh, couldn't get a good enough shot of, but it's Mila Jovovich and she's like opening up this portal and what appears to be man bear pig. So we are seeing a wide amount. Uh, actually I might, I might have that shot. Let me go, let me go back. Okay. There we go. This shot right here. Look what's behind her. Look what's behind her. It's a, it's a pig slash bear thing, right? Like it's like man bear pig. I'm pretty sure it's man bear pig, but that being said, I definitely want to see this, uh, April and IMAX. I, I don't go see many IMAX movies. If it's not 3d straight IMAX, I'll go check it out. Uh, in the meantime, what are your thoughts on this? Is it going to be worth your time or your money? Do you just not care? Do you, you just not give much of a shit anymore? Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, my name is of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been three buck theater. And if you guys want to call into our voicemail line, let your thoughts be known there too. You can always call, uh, 818-350-3284. That's 818-350, uh, 3281, 3281. I always get that one wrong, uh, but I do appreciate that. You can also check out our Discord link for that will be in the video description and uh, I'm pretty active on there. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I greatly appreciate you guys spending your time here. I just want you to know if you want to help support the channel, which is a great time now, you could do that by just liking the video or subscribing or checking out any of the links below in the video description. Anyway, thank you guys again so much for your time and your support. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you tomorrow on another video here for Three Buck Theater.